fighting! It's on a roar! It's a roar! Whoa! Get it! He's the insane marsupial platformers, it's Crash Bandicoot. For those who don't know who Crash Bandicoot is, he made his first appearance on the PlayStation 1 in the 90s and was purposely made to be a mascot for PlayStation, very similar to how Mario was the mascot for Nintendo and Sonic was the mascot for Sega in the 90s. Crash Bandicoot is, well, that, a bandicoot. However, he was mutated into his more human-like form by an evil scientist, Dr. Neocortex. Dr. Neocortex wants to take over the world with his mutated army of animals, and Crash was going to be the general of this army. But after he was reported as a defected mutant, he escaped Dr. Neocortex and became his worst enemy. Uh, don't you like it when someone creates their nemesis by accident? After this, Crash decides to infiltrate Neocortex's castle so that he could stop Cortex from mutating any more animals for his own evil army. That and to rescue his girlfriend Tana. Now while Crash isn't entirely all there in the head, he definitely has done a lot to show how strong he is, and today, he'll be competing with Mario, Sonic, and all the other mascots in the Super Smash Bros. roster. So starting off, Crash will be a midweight class character with some pretty high jumps and some pretty good speed. He'd have two jumps, and he would be able to wall jump and crawl. But now, let's dive into his costumes. Now, Crash Pinku has had quite a lot of designs over the years, but there's two that stand out amongst them all. The Insane Trilogy design, and his design from the recent game Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. So some people may be asking which design am I going with. Personally, I like his recent design more, so I'll be going with that. Don't worry though, I will incorporate Classic Crash to some capacity. Anyways, his default will have him in his design from It's About Time. The first alt has him in pink fur with blonde hair and lighter blue pants. This references Tana Bandicoot, Crash's girlfriend. The second all has his fur changed to yellow and white, with his hair turning black. This references Dr. Neo Cortex, Crash's creator. For his third all, his fur changes to a sand green, while his hair and pants turn into a copper bronze color. This is in reference to his entropy, an evil time traveler. His fourth all has him in red fur, in reference towards the evil Crash from Crash Twin Sanity. His fifth all has him entirely in blue. In reference towards Blue Hyena Crash, a costume for Crash in the spin-off game Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. That game has a ton of costumes, but out of them all, this is arguably the most popular, so it only made sense to let Crash have this as an alt. For his last two alts, these will be full-on costumes. His first costume has him in his classic appearance. And I mean that quite literally, as it will be completely blocky. Which is actually what he looked like back in the 90s. In fact, a lot of platformer games in the 90s really looked like this. Plus, this is a real costume in all the most recent Crash games. And his final costume has him with big bushy eyebrows, a bigger nose, and big teeth. In reference towards Fake Crash. Now, before we begin with the neutral attacks, I'm going to be introducing a whole new segment whenever I have the chance. You see, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had a new way of introducing playable characters. A way of allowing extra characters with barely any differences, but still unique enough to be a fighter. I think you guys know where I'm getting at. It's none other than Coco Bandicoot. She'll be Crash's Echo Fighter. For those who don't know, Echo Fighters are characters that have a very similar moveset to the base fighter, but with some slight modifications in their personalities or moves. For example, look at Peach and Daisy. They have the exact same moveset, but the difference between the two is their personalities. Anyways, Coco will work identically to Crash, but the only difference is that her attacks will come out slightly quicker, but it will also slightly be weaker. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into Coco's costumes. Coco's default will have her in her It's About Time appearance. Her first thought will have her hair turn slightly brighter with some blue dyed in. This references Tana Bandicoot, particularly the Tana we see in It's About Time. Her second alt will have her in orange fur and a green shirt and overalls. This is a combined reference. The fur references Coco's pet tiger, Pura, but the green costume references Tiny Tiger. The third alt will also be a combined reference. Her fur turns white and her shirt turns red while her overalls turn yellow. The fur references Polar, the baby polar bear that Crash likes to ride on against his will but the costume references Koala Kong. 
For the fourth all, Coco's fur will change to red, which references evil Coco from Crash Twin Sanity. The remaining alts will be costumes. Her fifth alt will have her in a costume inspired by Pro Skaters, which is an unlockable costume in the PS4 version of It's About Time. Her sixth alt will have her in a PS1 design. And the final costume has her with bushy eyebrows and big teeth, in reference towards fake Coco. But now, with all that out of the way, let's go and dive into their movesets. Now to avoid confusion, from here on out, I'm going to be talking about Crash instead of Coco for this moveset. This is mainly due to the fact that Echo Fighters literally have the exact same attacks as the base fighter, but if there's a move that fits better with Coco, I'll briefly talk about her. So starting off with Crash's jab, it'll have Crash do two claw swipes that ending with a roundhouse kick. This move comes from the widely hated game Crash of the Titans. Why was it widely hated, you may ask? Well... Crash, I really am cross with you. I'm just trying to do my job, and you go and cause all this chaos. Uh, shut up, Tiny Tiger. That's not what you're supposed to sound like. Anyways, this won't be the only time you see references toward that game. For his side tilt, he'll do another roundhouse kick. For his down tilt, he'll do his iconic sliding attack. He reaches a pretty good distance, but does have some end lag. For his up tilt, he'll do an uppercut. Very similar to Mario's up tilt, hilariously enough. For his forward smash, he'll do a lunging kick just like Fox. The only difference with this move is that Crash's power is increased, but it also does end with some end lag. His down smash will have him crouch and spin a few times, which comes from Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, particularly when he's crouching and underneath of some sort of surface. For his up smash, he'll do a simple leg kick upwards, again, just like Fox. For his neutral air, he'll mimic Mario's neutral air. It comes out fairly quick, but it's not all that strong. For his forward air, he'll rapidly kick his legs forward, just like what Fox does. For his back air, he'll put both of his legs together and kick backwards, much like a few characters in Smash. For his down air, he'll do his iconic belly flop. It's his strongest aerial, but it does have some start lag and a lot of end lag. But as a positive, it does have the capability of burying anyone who happened to be right beneath it. Now if you're playing as Coco, however, the move will change to her butt slam. She'll fall downwards a lot faster, but it doesn't have that much power to it. And finally, for Crash's up air, he'll do a kick above himself. Simple, but effective. And speaking of effective, let's go ahead and spin on over to their special attacks. For Crash's neutral special, Crash will use his signature move, the Cyclone Spin. Anyone who's familiar with Crash knows very well that this makes the most sense to be his neutral special. But let me clarify, this spin will not work like Meta Knight or Incineroar spinning attacks. You see, in Super Smash Bros, Meta Knight spin propels him in the air, whereas Incineroar's spin is heavy but moves very slow. Crash's will be so much more than theirs. For starters, it comes out quick and has incredible knockback. Second, it's capable of reflecting items and projectiles. And third, if you hold the special button down, Crash will spin faster, which increases the power and knockback of the attack. Unfortunately, it does result in some end lag afterwards if you happen to do that. This spin is Crash's signature move in every single game. Well, almost every game because of that game. Anyways, for Crash's side special, he'll equip an invention from Crash Bandicoot Warp, the Wumpa Bazooka. Crash will pull out a bazooka that holds a Wumpa Fruit. This Wumpa Fruit will actually explode on impact with an opponent or the stage. Not only that, but it can be aimed into any direction indicated by an infrared light beam coming from the Wumpa Bazooka. Unfortunately, the issue with this move is fairly glaring. You see it too, right? Crash will be locked into position while aiming, so only use this move when you absolutely need to. Now, if you're playing as Coco, however, the side special will change. Instead of using the Wumpa Bazooka, Coco will be riding on a pet tiger, Pura. To simply put it, it's a move that will move Coco forwards or backwards depending on your directional input. Pura is the hitbox and she launches anyone on impact. However, there is one weak spot with this move. If an opponent happens to be shielding, Pura will slam into the shield and disappear, causing Coco to be launched. If this happens, Coco will suffer an uncomfortable amount of end lag as she gets back up. Now for Crash's down special, it'll be complicated to say the least. It'll have Crash toss a crate. Crates are arguably the second most iconic thing from the Crash Bandicoot series aside from Crash's spin. For this move, Crash will simply toss a crate. That may sound simple, but here's the thing. In the Crash Bandicoot series, there's always been more than one type of crate, and I'll be incorporating that into this down special. When Crash tosses a crate, it'll be completely random and you won't know which crate it is until it's tossed. Now getting into the types of crates themselves, the most common crate will be a simple crate. 
it does about 5% damage. It automatically breaks after one attack or if it's jumped on. The second type of crate is the question crate. It does about 5 to 10% of damage, but it ultimately depends on what's in the crate. If items are turned on, a random item will spawn after the crate breaks. The third type of crate is a metal crate. These can't be destroyed, but they disappear after a total of 5 seconds have passed. If it hits an opponent, it deals a whooping 15% of damage. The fourth type of crate will be the iconic TNT crate. Once thrown, it'll just sit there. It can only be activated if it's jumped on, and if it's jumped on, it'll automatically count down from 3, and will explode once it hits to 0. The explosion radius is pretty lackluster, but it deals a total of 20% of damage. The fifth type of crate is the extremely deadly Nitro Crate. It appears less often than the other crates, but it's able to KO opponents at early percentages. Unlike the TNT Crate, the Nitro Crate automatically explodes as soon as it collides with the stage or an opponent. Not only that, but it also has incredibly good radius and it deals a total of 50% damage on top of having incredible knockback. I know this sounds terrifying, but remember, it appears less often than the others. So you don't have to worry that much about this crate. But when it does get tossed, you have better be running away as fast as you can. I know this special sounds super complicated, but I'm still not done. There's one less crate that appears more often than the Nitro crate, but less often than the TNT crate. It's the iconic Aku Aku crate. Aku Aku is Crash's most iconic sidekick, and has been around just as long as Crash, so it only made the most sense to include Aku Aku in some way. Think of Aku Aku as a temporary shield, as it will actually protect you from a total of 10% of enemy damage. Once he protects you from that 10% damage, he'll disappear. However, if you can manage to break two more additional Aku Aku crates, you'll automatically wear Aku Aku and be completely invincible to everything. Not only that, but you can actually launch foes by simply bumping into them. It only lasts for 8 seconds, but if you aren't the one to get the Aku Aku crates, you'll need to get out of the way as fast as possible. I should also mention that Crash himself can also interact with his own crates, including the TNT and Nitro crates. Don't worry though, Crash can never be KO'd by his own crates, but he will take damage. Whew, that was a lot for the down special. Now then, let's finish up this move set with the up special. Uh, Pokemon 23, I want to suggest his up special. Alright, what is it? It should be his jetpack from Crash Bandicoot 2, obviously. Are... are you serious? Yeah, why? Sorry, but that is such a boring idea. Even more boring than those actual levels. Well, nerd, what do you think his up special should be then? Well, it's pretty obvious, actually. So obvious, in fact, that I actually slightly incorporated this function for his down special. Jumping on crates. Ew, why didn't I come up with that move? Yes, well. <clears throat> Anyways, Crash will jump off the jump crate, which is not your traditional crate. Instead of breaking after one jump, it breaks when someone attacks it. Not only that, but if you hold the special button, it'll turn to a metal jump crate, which not only increases the height of the jump, but it also is able to spike opponents if used in the air. Unfortunately, this crate will disappear as soon as it hits someone or lands on the stage. And now, for the final smash. This was tough. Seriously, Crash has done quite a lot of stuff that could be considered as a final smash. You know, now I think about it, this is actually the second character in a row where I've had a tough time coming up with a final smash for. Then again, this is also another platformer character. Anyways, it ultimately had to come down to one idea. So the final smash will be... The Invincible Aku Aku! For this final smash, Crash will automatically get Aku Aku on his face and rush forward. Anyone who happened to get launched by Crash will be sent into a rift from It's About Time, causing the cinematic to start. The cinematic then shows the player getting hit left and right by Crash with Aku Aku. Then Crash spins so fast that he causes a tornado to form around him and spins towards the foe, ending the cinematic. Crash happens to hit an opponent with this final smash, Crash will automatically get an invincible Aku Aku with him after the cinematic ends. The final smash stays the same regardless if you're Crash or Coco. This final smash is mostly original, but it also references how Aku Aku is immune to everything. The stage of choice is the Wumpa Island from all of the Crash games. Much like a lot of the stages I've already done, it'll teleport from one area to another. By default, it starts in the warp room from Crash Bandicoot Warped. In the background, Dr. Neo Cortex will control where you go via the central computer. These locations range from Insanity Beach, Turtle Woods, Cortex Castle, Temple Ruins, Toad Village, and Insanity Peak. Given 
that Crash comes from a platformer game, a lot of these songs are already upbeat and fit perfectly well in the context of a fighting game, but a few of these will have to be remixed. In total, 24 songs would be included, 15 of which would be remixed. And where's the music from the spin-off games you may be asking? Well I couldn't decide on which ones to go with, so I decided not to go with any from these spin-offs this time around. Don't worry though, I want to do another video at some point talking about other Crash characters be given possible Smash movesets. And that would be if Crash Bandicoot and Coco Bandicoot joined Super Smash Bros. I failed to mention this earlier, but aside from Steven Sora, who we actually got, Crash is my most wanted Super Smash Bros. character. His games are extremely fun to play, and he has such an interesting history, which is why I want to see him in Smash. Nonetheless, do you have a character you'd like to see be given a Smash moveset? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe? That way you can get notified when I put out any Super Smash Bros. moveset videos. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.